Well, John, it's your first uh, big tournament since that success in Miami. First of all, now you've had a bit of time to absorb that, that success. How special a moment was that? Yeah, it was very special. Was certainly, hands down, the biggest win of, of my career. And this is my, I think, my 11th year on the, on the Pro Tour. So it just goes to show that with persistence and patience, all your hard work, as cliche as it sounds, can... Um, pay off and it did for me in Miami in a big way. Um, what was the sort of reaction like when you got home to, to that success? Yeah I mean people were obviously very happy for me um, but I didn't have that you know too much time to you know reflect on it. I was up in Nashville two days later for Davis Cup but still I was I was on cloud nine of course when I won it and I stayed on cloud nine for a very very long time after that. Um, I mean, you're the first to admit, I think you've had your, your best success, play your best tennis on, on home soil. Why, why do you think you've sometimes not been able to translate the way you play over in the States when you come back to Europe? It's just, I think it just comes with a, a, there's a comfort level with me being back home in America. And I think some European players can say the same for playing over here in Europe. So, but I do think as I've gotten older and I've gotten more mature, I have played better in Europe, I think my results the last few years have been much better than they were in the you know five six years uh, prior. So, again, even though I'm now 33, I'm feeling fit and strong, and I'm starting to appreciate all the beautiful things that that Europe has to offer. It's such an incredible place, and you know I don't I won't be able to come to these amazing cities and play tennis forever. So I'm just trying to enjoy it. So Marston, Masters 1000 winner back into the top 10. What are the next targets and how important is it to, to try and build on that momentum? Yeah, it's, it's very important. Look, I have to think back and revert back to how I was feeling on the court, what I was thinking on the court in Miami. Of course, keep doing, doing what I need to do on the practice court in the gym, taking care of all the things that, that I can't control off the court. But I certainly need to try to replicate those feelings and my thoughts on the court in Miami because more than anything, it's how I was mentally those 10 days that uh, was able to allow me to win the tournament. I mean, your game's probably fair to say you're naturally suited to playing on hard courts, but how much do you enjoy the challenge, let's say, of playing on dirt? Yeah, I, it is a challenge and I do embrace it quite a lot. I think if I had to say the five best matches I've ever played in my career, I, th I would say two of them have been on clay. So. I've played extremely well on clay in the past. I've played some bad matches on clay in the past as well, but I know that this is a surface and it's clay court conditions, especially if it's hot outside, can suit my game very, very well. So something I'm not um, shying away from, I'm gonna try to do as well as I can this clay court season. I know it can be a very good surface for me. Um, you've reached the quarterfinals here in Madrid, and, and, and again, slightly specific conditions here. We are at slightly high altitude. I mean, yeah. do the conditions here in Madrid suit, suit your game? I think they do uh, quite a lot. Uh, these, these conditions are great for my game. It's a very good serving venue here. I would, I would say it's one of the top three serving conditions on tour all year. And for a player like me, that, that should uh, generally bode well. I've actually missed this tournament the last two years. I had an injury with my elbow two years ago and then last year I was sick so it's my first time being back here in three years now so I'm happy to be back it's very good conditions for me I have played well here in the past before and I'm looking forward to playing well here again.